Um, yes. I call today's episode Trump and Biden's defiance um, because I think that the contrast is quite stark. Um, the media has been in the past week calling both President Biden and President Trump defiant. Trump, of course, because he uh, raised his fist in defiance after he was nearly killed by uh, a would-be assassin. And Biden, because he is defying all of his friends who are calling for him to drop out of the race. So I just think that the contrast is just incredibly stark. Um, there's been pictures going around of um, Reagan's, uh, the, the the map of um, which states went for Reagan after he was nearly assassinated. And I think it's all but one uh, voted for him. Um, I, I, I think this is the nail in the coffin. Um, if the uh, presidential debate wasn't uh, already that, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, like the I think that quite a few people um, are kind of in, in dissident circles are suggesting that this was like a site or this was staged because it gave Trump this massive propaganda victory. And like, yeah, like I said, like that scene of him um, sh sh holding his fist aloft while the, the, secure, the secret service are surrounding him, um, irrespective of your political persuasion. That was like pretty cool. Like that, like that was like yeah. pretty blood on his face and stuff. So it's just like, and I think that, yeah, in the context of, well, Biden has a, a, a appears like a, a completely demented um, grandpa at this point versus like kind of unkillable <laughs> Trump. It's, yeah. it's like quite, it's like quite, it's quite the contrast. I mean, I, I, the election was almost certainly already in the bag for him. Now um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a fake accompli at this point. Um, and I know, yeah, that I, I, yeah, I think the people who were suggesting that this was like, uh, this was stage managed, like he came so close to getting killed. Like he is like lucky that it, the, the, it was the, the bullet wasn't like a few millimeters in another direction because he would have died. Um, yeah, and, I, I, I mean, if Trump wasn't yeah. hasn't lost the uh, hadn't if Trump lost the evangelical vote by kind of equivocating on on, on the abortion issue, he's got it yeah. back. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. But it's, I also just think as well, it's like that the I mean, you know, Rob, Robert Fizzo, um, and we'll get in, we'll get into this in due course. But like he was the Slovakian uh, leader who who got shot, um, I believe it was in June um, this year. Uh, like you know, he is got got repeatedly gut shot. And it was touch and go whether he would survive, and he's going to have health issues for the rest of his life. Like he can barely walk. Yeah. So it's like it, it, you know, it, the, the, it, it, if if it had struck Trump in the head, then that's him. That's him gone. And I don't. I don't think that he that he would be so insane, or his supporters would be so insane as to as to risk that. Um, it's also quite clear from from uh, it, the details remain murky such as the way of these things but it definitely looks and i've seen some security consultants state this um on on twitter so you know uh, attach as much significance to that as you like but stating that it is absolutely incredible where the shooter was set up his like kind of play he had like a, a plain line of sight he was seen by multiple people um he had the flag billowing nearby which assisted with like understanding like wind impact on shooting which is like a you know a big thing when you're using a sniper rifle so it's like yeah like it it, it appears like a massive intelligence fail i'm much more siding with this was kind of allowed to happen um but like or was at least uh, it, it it was assisted by neg by negligence whether that was deliberate negligence or not i'm not so sure um, but yeah, um, he's now um, a, 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 an, an even bigger kind of personality as a result of this. Yeah, I, I agree. If I had to pick a conspiracy here, it would be it would be uh, that this was allowed to happen over this was staged. Um, yeah. You know, Trump is famously uh, reviled by the intelligence community. So yeah. um, for them to stage this, uh, risking his life. Um, so closely. I mean, we're talking a yeah. matter of centimeters. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just seems quite ridiculous to me. Um, but I yeah. think we should start off uh, by, I mean, we have on one hand, the failure by the Secret Service, and on the other hand, the failure by the media. So there's a number of, um, a number of 
headlines that I want to go through here, mm. um, including starting off with CNN, which had two bangers. Um, first, I'll pull up Trump speech interrupted by Secret Service. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we have also via CNN. And you know what? Uh, yeah, JFK falls really hard. Uh, yeah, Jeff, and, and the more famous one, uh, you know, Secret Service rushes Trump off stage after he falls at rally. Um, some other headlines. This is via ABC. I'm just going to go through them because it's too much to pull them all up. Go for it. Go for it. Donald Trump escorted off stage by Secret Service during rally after loud noises ring out in crowd. Washington Post. Trump leaves rally after loud noises erupt. MSNBC. Trump rush, rushed off stage. Well, can you can you not? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Trump rushed off stage at Pennsylvania rally by Secret Service after loud popping noises heard. MSNBC. Uh, I'm sorry. AP. Uh, Donald Trump whisked off stage in Pennsylvania after loud noises rang through the crowd. And for the sake of, uh, well, how do I? See, like, sorry, yeah, folks. Wait. I'm getting a little bit. Uh, I, I, I'm getting used to Streamyard, but we have uh, Gordon Chang, who um, has been predicting the collapse of uh, China for, I think, since the since the early 2000s. Um, and this is gunman who shot at President Trump has been identified as Chinese. This is uh, him citing the New York Post. I love. Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce his name Chen Wei Hu uh his uh Wei Wa uh his reply Gordon Chang was the shooter um mm. one of one of the best trolls on Twitter in my opinion yes Mr. Chen here yeah I, so I, we I, have I greatly enjoy him we have a huge amount of media malpractice here um I think that you know it would have not it would they could have maintained their uh you know their approach of like waiting for all the facts to come out and just said suspected shooting from the get-go um i also well, think I, mean, I saw, I saw someone ahead. make i oh, sorry i saw someone make the point that like that the front i think it was the front page of the nyt it had like trump shot in in uh, speech marks as if like um he, it, and someone made the point that like it, it's it's like trump's a palestinian that like the, the, the level of, mm -hmm. of, of energy and verbal gymnasm that's in get in, in which has been engaged in order to avoid to, like just acknowledging that yeah, like someone tried to fucking kill him. Yeah, like, it's yeah, like, undeniable. Like, yeah, the the voice could not be more passive. Yeah. So, and I, you know, I'd also add that Biden last night. Uh, this was oh god, like three a.m. my time. Um, mm. Refusing to. Um, categorize this explicitly as a as an assassination attempt before all the facts were out i think that was a strategic misstep as well um he said he had his own opinion um he should have offered that opinion uh mm -hmm. it could not have hurt him uh but him saying that you know um he's he doesn't have the facts yet it it's not a good look um so you know once again uh, malpractice all around. Um, I think it's quite funny that uh, DEI is being blamed on the part of the Secret Service. Apparently, the Secret Service director was a former uh, director of security for Pepsi um, and and has been uh, pushing um, for a majority of uh, uh, for, for, for an increase of uh, female security agents. Um, but in terms of the blame game, I think that we need to talk about the elephant in the room rhetoric. So yeah. we have, uh, see, StreamYard is such a pain with this uh, pulling up, pulling up stuff. But I'm gonna do my best here. Yeah. Um, we have. I'm gonna play this video. But Trump is in just now. No, I'm serious. He's unhinged. He snapped. Let us know if he you guys can hear it. This time around, he refuses this time around to say he'll accept the election of this election. The result. Can you imagine that? Look, he says if he loses, 
There will be a bloodbath. And the United States Supreme Court said there is virtually no limit on the power of a president. Trump said if he wins, he'll be a dictator on day one. He means it, folks. We're not going to let that happen. Over my dead body will happen. So that was the day before the assassination attempt. Um, Biden repeating this claim that Trump has stated that if he's not elected, it will be a bloodbath. And mm. I'm going to pull up one more thing because I, I think this is kind of important. Um, this bloodbath claim. And it's just a Google News search for mm. Trump bloodbath. Trump warns of bloodbath uh, and other rhetoric inflame his 2024 20, campaign trail. That's from Reuters. So this bloodbath comment, which Biden keeps hammering, mm. which the mainstream media keeps hammering, is it comes if you if you go to the long version of the quote the one that has you know the essential context he's talking about the auto industry and he says if i'm not elected it will be a bloodbath in the auto industry that's not exactly the the mm -hmm. quote but this is very clear clearly what he's talking about meanwhile uh biden uh in a <laughs> this is this is funny this is the political headline for this article B defiant biden tells donors we are done talking about the debate. So once again, the defiance. But this is the full quote from Biden in a phone call with private donors. I have one job, and that's to beat Donald Trump. I'm absolutely certain I'm the best person to be able to do that. So we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye. Mm. So it's, I mean, you have the Democrats hammering this bloodbath talking point, which is like kind of a fake quote. And meanwhile, mm calling to put Trump in a bullseye. But yeah. you had some some uh some points on rhetoric that you wanted to to bring up. Yeah, well it's like I mean I just do just think that in effect um we we heard a lot um under Obama about like the the the, the right wing of the U in in the US creating this like climate of of hatred and aggression and violence. Now was that what was the name Kathy Gifford? Who got shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who like, yeah, yeah. Who got, uh, uh, who got shot um, after there was? I think it was uh, Sarah Palin circulated photos of her and other um, like Democrats in 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 crosshairs and stuff. But like that kind of rhetoric has been completely absorbed by the Democrats now. They engage in it like all the time, and it's a bit like. Well, okay, so you've, 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 yeah, you've created this, this, this ludicrously um, polarized, uh, or almost like kind of to the point of like segregation, um, political culture, like in, in, in the US, and you spent your entire, all of your energy warning about what a danger Trump poses to like the Republic, um, and how he's going to turn the US into a fascist dictatorship and if, if we don't stop him. And then it's like, well, are you remotely surprised that this leads to people getting killed? Because people believe it. Like people actually genuinely really believe that Trump is going to, I mean, that, like that some of the, some of the crazy reporting during his first time in office, and I, 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 think, I think it will very much be yes, his first term, um, and uh, he'll, he will be reelected probably by a landslide this, this November. That, that yeah, that, that, that people were saying, oh well, you know, living in Trump's America is like living in a fascist hunter. And, and, like, and, and, and this was literally reported. Like, I mean, how like how grossly offensive is it to the residents of actual fascist hunters with um, you know military dictatorships imposed by CIA coups um, to suggest that, 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 that living in the US was anything like this? And it's like, yeah, that like people genuinely a large number of people believe that he is this extremely dangerous threat who's going to usher in like this fourth Reich. So of course, someone in that context is going to, yeah, like um, elect to commit suicide because of course they were going to get uh, killed, killed or, or at the very least, you know, imprisoned for life for doing this if they, if they, if they'd gotten away with it. And it's like, yeah, the, it, it, we, we shouldn't be surprised at all. Like I mentioned Robert Fizzo, um, in the in, in 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 the introduction, um, he was killed by this completely like deranged Ukraine ultra who may have had foreign confederates 
uh, we don't know uh, because his Facebook profile was completely wiped um, very suspiciously uh, within within an hour of the shooting before his name had even been um, reported in the media. It seems anyway. Like the the the, the media has made the mainstream media uh, it ha has made much of the fact they they they've, they've adopted this narrative that F Fizzo's toxic anti-Western politics created this environment in which he got shot. Um, no, uh, like actually his, his policies and his, um, uh, his uh, uh, premiership are supported by a significant majority of Slovaks. The toxicity in Slovakian politics comes from uh, Western funded media outlets in the country who are all universally anti fizzo and have been again similar to trump talking him up as this dangerous dictator like kind of on a par with hitler uh, and so yeah uh, and 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 claiming that his um and his opposition to sanctions on russia and opposition to arming ukraine and his comments about how this is obviously um uh, uh ukraine has obviously lost the war at this point and it's just or it's left to us to just like attempt to to make the best of it and pick up the pieces um yeah, like in that context, like of course people are going to take matters into their own hands because they believe that he represents a threat to them or things yeah. that they care about. Um, so yes, we, we shouldn't be surprised at all. And there is a very, very, there is a, um, there is a phrase um, in kind of 70s America, which was, was, was said of psychedelic drugs. If you buy the ticket, you've got to take a ride. You've got it. So, so if, if, if you take magic mushrooms and you have a bad trip, well, you're locked in. So, like, you know, you, you're kind of in for a penny, in for a pound with that. It's the same now. It's like, I just think that the, the toothpaste is so far out of the tube in terms of this, this polarizing, dangerous rhetoric. And I do, I mean, a lot of it is tied up with DEI and, and, and pronouns and, and all this other stuff. That, yeah, that, 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 that you, you, you've kind of got to accept. Now, I might add that, like, if you if you um, uh, if you go back to the start of the 1990s in Yugoslavia, um, a large number uh, the, the the West was backing uh, the kind of hardcore ethno national completely insane fascists in Croatia, in Bosnia, in in Kosovo, um, and and also in Slovenia, and they were engaging in all sorts of of uh, incendiary violent rhetoric um and there was this assumption that well once they're in once they're in office and once they once croatia and bosnia are split off from yugoslavia and, and yugoslavia is basically no more they'll be fine and you know this won't actually translate to violence and it's like well you spent multiple years talking about how you want to create a a serb free Croatia and turn Orthodox churches into Catholic churches. Well, um, don't be surprised when people take this seriously and take up arms because they are frightened. Now, I think that there's another point to make as well, which is that I just I think that the the assassination on Trump is in any way not particularly surpri surprising, for, both for the reasons that we've discussed, but also because I do, um, yes, our friend Nabosha Malik has this great phrase, which is that America is in this state of non-kinetic civil war. Now, he grew up in Sarajevo in the 90s um, and saw the, 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 the war break out and experienced that firsthand. And he states that based on that experience, he very much sees the parallels with, with, with the modern US today. Now, um, th there's a large number, I've spoken to a lar large number of people who believe that the US descending into violence is complete, is just completely inconceivable and, pe and, 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 it, and it won't happen for a variety of reasons, including the fact that the population is quite fat and unhealthy. <laughs> um, like, I think that, that you know, in, in, in Bosnia, uh, it was believed because it was a very harmonious, multi-faith, multi-ethnic um, republic within Yugoslavia, that, 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 that fighting would never break out there. And one day everybody started killing each other and it was absolutely horrific. And I do think that, I mean, we saw that standoff with Texas um, and the federal authorities, like the federal, the, the federal government in the US is extremely bloated. And there's an enormous number of people whose salaries and um, whose position in society depends massively on the federal government continuing to exist. Now, if a state was to attempt to secede, or indeed, say, uh, Russia and China were, were, were like were, uh, adopted a policy of only talking 
to the governors or the, the kind of state governments, um, there would be, be a violent backlash against that by federal authorities. And they have the muscle and the budgets and the weapons to make that happen. Uh, so, I mean, you know, we sh we shall see, I guess. But um, you know, perhaps perhaps this is the start of a redemption arc for the U.S. Um, or perhaps not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's hope. It's 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 hard for me to you know agree with um, people who say that it couldn't descend into violence in the U.S. I mean, I was in Charlottesville. I watched. Yeah left wing and right wingers beat the crap out of each other i was a few feet away from the car attack um i filmed yeah. the aftermath of it because i i wasn't filming at at that exact moment B blood on the windshields of of cars um mm -hmm. people uh strewn about in the street um just to play a little bit of devil's advocate not mm -hmm. too much but a little bit um republicans right now conservatives right now are saying that the democratic rhetoric about uh, Trump being a threat to democracy inflamed this. And mm. I don't know. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, I don't think that this um, young man, uh, 20 years old, uh, was particularly concerned about democracy. I mean, we don't have a motive yet, so I'm perhaps speaking too soon. But um, this seems to me uh, like many other of the violent incidents that frequently make headlines for my country um to be a product of of, of uh mental illness um yeah. so i mean there's that but i'm not disagreeing that the rhetoric is is uh very polarized and very dangerous um and i think that uh more than the attempted killing of of the president the, it, it it could lead to mass violence in the style of Charlottesville uh, in, 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 in a situation that's more like Charlottesville on steroids. Um, so very dangerous situation. And, and you do see, you do see as you put in our show notes, uh, high level people in the media mm. um, fanning the flames. And so yeah. what we have up now is a, a explicit call for, uh, from Keith Olbermann, former yeah. MSNBC host, uh, diehard liberal. Uh, yeah, I might add that, like, just go ahead. Just like, like Keith Olbermann, like when I mean, he was like pushing RussiaGate before it was cool, um, and there he he having been fired from every job in the media he's ever had. Um, he like in, in his podcast filmed in his basement, presumably um, following Trump's election, he was talking about how like. Uh, Trump is a Russian puppet, and that you know, we have fought, we've been defeated by Russia in a war we didn't know was happening, and talking about how the, the, the entire US government is being run by Russian scum and like all of this just complete insanity. And you've got yeah. to bear in mind that the, the, the Olbermann, even though like he doesn't have the biggest audience in the world, was has been doing this and engaging in this kind of rhetoric for the best part of 15 years, like very prominently, and like talking about how um, the Republicans are, are unleashing 21st century fascism and that they're a threat to, that, that, you, that they're a personal threat to you and your family. Again, um, like, it's just, but what do you think is going to come of this complete, like, um, it just bombast and exaggeration and 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 distortion um it's not it's you know nothing good um and i think that, that i mean this is even more classic so david aronovich um who is a absolute weasel um of a human being he is a uh kind of veteran british client journalist who worked for rupert murdoch for many many years and is now a, a bbc radio 4 presenter um, and he wrote a book called Voodoo Histories, which is all about attacking cons quote unquote conspiracy theorists as idiots. I mean, it's, it's, it's like extraordinarily bad. Um, he tweet he tweeted that if he was Joe Biden, he'd have Trump murdered. Um, yeah. and, and like then very hastily this morning deleted it, saying it was clearly satirical, but has been deliberately misinterpreted. Uh, and he, now, now he's like worrying, like like this now endangers me. And it's like, well, I mean, you did just openly call for someone to be killed. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. It's just, I mean, you know, satire, satire, all you like. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, well, I mean, far be it from the Brits to uh, not, um, <laughs> you know, cause problems for other countries. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's just, it's awesome as well. It's like, it's the kind of rhetoric, like, just as an example of this, like, the, the 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 kind of things that were said about like Jeremy Corbyn about how he was this kind of raging anti-Semite and like the, the, I mean David Ronovich was a key booster and amplifier of this bull this complete this bullshit like Corbyn being someone who has dedicated his life to fighting racism and and oppression like you know in all of its forms and has a history of siding with Jewish causes and protecting um, um, Jewish groups and the synagogue and his constituency from um, uh, like it, it just this actually led like a large number of people to genuinely believe this. Like there was a there was a, several journal, mainstream figures, including journalists, who stated sincerely, "Well, you know, like if Corbyn wins, he's going to reinstitute Auschwitz," yeah. and like people actually believed this. So again, and then you have Brit British Army soldiers using pictures of Jeremy Corbyn for target practice. Yeah. Of course, had he won office, there would have been people within the national security establishment who saw it as their patriotic duty to kill him. Yeah. Another uh, figure who uh, has kind of fanned the flames here yes. is uh, Reid Hoffman. And I didn't put this in the show notes, forgive me. Um, so who, who, who said, uh, you know, he was, there was that some kind of conference with Peter Thiel. Yeah. And Thiel sarcastically thanked Hoffman for funding various lawsuits against Trump, which turned him into a, quote, martyr. Yeah, I wish I, I had made a, an actual martyr, um, is Hoffman's reply. So very explicitly calling for the death of Trump. Uh, Reid Hoffman is the founder of LinkedIn, and he's up there with Piero Midiar and uh, Mark Zuckerberg and these other figures who made billions of dollars off of uh being leaders in the tech industry um yeah. people and, and like piero midiar he's um somebody who pumps a lot of money into civil society groups uh anti disinformation outlets and so on um he's very concerned with american soft power he's very much a national security minded figure um and he's actually getting uh a lot of heat right now for his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out uh, before, because um, you know, this is somebody who, who is very concerned about democracy, um, you know, calling for uh, Trump to be made a martyr um, mm -hmm. out of, out of a place of spite, not, not out of a place of support. Hey everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.